If you're being required to do things that make you weak and ashamed, then stop. Don't do them. You're an agent of your own destruction. You should prepare to find another job. And if possible, you should prepare to find a better job. You got tyranny or famine. Those are your choices. But you get to pick which one you have. You don't want to be in a place that's stultifying. You don't want to be in a place where there's no challenge. You might even quit your job if there's no challenge. You say, well, that's a good job. It gives you security. And you think, God, I can't stand this. It's eating away at my soul. It's all security and no challenge. So why do you want a challenge? Because that's what you're built for. That's what you're built for. You're built to take on a maximal load. Right? Because that's what strengthens you. And you need to be strong because life is extraordinarily difficult. And because the evil king is always whittling away at the structure of the state. And you have to be awake and sharp to stop that from happening. So that you don't become corrupt. And so that your family doesn't become corrupt. And so that your state doesn't have to become, be, be, become corrupt. You have to have your eyes open and your wits sharp and your words at the ready. And you have to be educated. And you have to know about your history. And you know how, have to know how to think. And you have to know how to read. And you have to know how to speak. And you have to know how to aim. And you have to be willing to hoist the troubles of the world up on your shoulders. If you watch yourself, you say, well, I had a particularly good day at work. And what does that mean? It means that you lost your sense of time, right? Because when you're having not a good day at work, it's like, first it's one minute to three, and then it's 45 seconds to three, and then it's 30 seconds. That's what school was like for me. It was like 21 years ago, I went to my daughter's school to sit for a class. It was about an hour long. And uh, I was sitting there, and the teacher had all the kids on the floor and was having some of the kids read to the others and some of the kids who were reading couldn't read at all and I had exactly the same experience I was sitting there it was like being it was like being seven years old again I could see the clock going tick <laughs> tick and I thought you know if I was in this classroom for three days I would misbehave 40 years old I would misbehave exactly like I did when I was when I was six well, that's no place to be, right? Because if you're in a workplace and pathological things are happening, hey, this is easy. I can tell you how you know if pathological things are happening at your workplace or they're happening with you, one of the two, but you can straighten that out. If you're being required to do things that make you weak and ashamed, then stop. Don't do them. Like one of the things I learned from Solzhenitsyn and Frankel was that systems go terribly under, out of control when people don't stop them when they're going mildly out of control. You know, and you might say, oh, I should just keep my goddamn head down and shut up. It's like, maybe you should. Like, that's not bad advice. You know, you don't want to make unnecessary enemies and you don't need any more trouble than you need. But you got to ask yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, what makes you think you're not selling your soul? You know, and there's so much foolishness going on in the mid-level bureaucratic world now. That's where all the tyranny seems to be focused. And the reason that it multiplies is because sensible people say nothing when they should say something. And what's so f strange about that is that there are way more sensible people than people who aren't sensible. They're just not as noisy. So what you'll turn out if, like, you know, so let's say something's bugging the hell out of you at work. Well, then you have to prepare to, to find another job. That's the first thing you have to do. I don't think that you should find another job, but you should prepare to find another job. And if possible, you should prepare to find a better job. You got tyranny or famine. Those are your choices. But you get to pick which one you have. And I would say if, if you're being oppressed, and I mean in your soul, by what you're required to swallow at work, well, you think you're not paying a price for that? You got no self-respect, and, 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 and rightly so. But worse than that, you're an agent of your own destruction. You're destroying your own ideal, and you're letting people who are weak and corrupt win. And if you stood up and, and stood up properly, but you have to put yourself in order to do this, at least to some degree, right? You can't do it casually. You have to do it from some position of preparedness and strength, then what makes you think you couldn't scare them back into the corners? And that would be a good thing. And 
you know, the alternative personally is bad because there's a psychological degeneration that goes along with it. I've seen this with many, many of the people that I work with who have been tyrannized in the workplace to the absolute detriment of their psychological and physical health, right? To the point of collapse, confronting these crazy, crazy things when they were sensible people. Um, that's a terrible price to pay, man. Like, it's, it's a bad price. And then, if the foolishness isn't dealt with at the local level, when it's still relatively trivial, then it will multiply until it's dealt with at the social level. And we're seeing signs of that already. Antifa is a good sign of that. You know, and problems that aren't solved multiply, and soon people fight. And you know, better to argue than to fight. Unless you want to fight. And some people want to fight, and I can understand why, but I wouldn't recommend it, because that doesn't lead good places. It really doesn't lead good places. So I'd say you have a duty. Maybe that's, that's why you stand up. It's because you have a goddamn duty to stand up and say, just say what you have to say. You don't even have to be trying to make a point exactly or trying to get something done. It's like, this is how it looks to me. Because if you can't tell someone to go to hell, then you can't negotiate with them. And if, and if they've got you over a barrel, then you can't say anything. So you've got you to gotta set yourself up so you've got some mobility. And actually, that's a really good principle in your life, period. You should set yourself up so that you have a lateral move at hand. And then you should find out, well, are there things at work that are disturbing my soul? You know, and you find that out. First of all, you ask yourself, okay, I'm disturbed at work. Okay, I'm probably weak and deceitful and useless and lazy. You might as well start with that. And then you talk to some people, like your, your wife, your friends, your co-workers, and find out, are you stupid, deceitful, and lazy? Or is there something not so good going on at work? And so if you, if you can then eliminate your own personal pathology as a cause of your dissatisfaction, then maybe there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. And maybe you should say something about it before the whole goddamn thing collapses, because that can happen. It can happen in companies a lot faster than people ever think. You know, and you may find that, well, first of all, you may find if you say something, well, first of all, that's an adventure, that's for sure. That's a bloody adventure. And you have to do it carefully. And, and you have to be prepared for it. But it might be the best thing that ever happened to you. And the other thing is, if you're careful about it, you get your words right. Like, and this is a... This is strategic battle, right? It's not something you wander into carelessly. Then you may find that there's lots of people who feel exactly the same way you do and that you've actually cottoned on to something. You're a canary in a coal mine and not just some like psychopathic mouthpiece. So you got to ask yourself when you go and do what you do, like, is this making you stronger? Is this making you weaker? And if it's making you weaker, then you got to ask yourself, do you really want to be weaker? Because the weaker you get, the more you're tyrannized. And then, worse than that, like the weaker you get, the more bitter you get. And the more you'll work towards terrible things, the more you'll snap at your wife, the more you'll kick your kids, you know? Like, it's no joke to be tyrannized at work. And so I would say you have an ethical responsibility as a citizen to forthrightly confront creeping tyranny no matter where it occurs. It's not so obvious that jobs are beneath people. You know, because imagine you have a job as a, a checkout person in a, in a grocery store. You know, it's a fairly unskilled job. You can be a, some miserable, resentful, horrid bastard doing that job, boy. You know, you can come in there just exuding resentment and bitterness and making mistakes and making sure that every customer that passes by you has a slightly worse day than they need to, right? And, and you know, pilfering time and perhaps pilfering goods and being resentful about the people who, who gave you the position because they're above you in the dominance hierarchy and talking, you know, bad things, gossiping behind the back of your co-workers. It's like you can take your menial position, self-described, and turn that into a very nice little slice of hell. That's for sure.